Hi everyone, <clears throat> Stepan here. Today I'm going to show you my round 2 game from the Versar Open or round 5 game because I missed the first 3 rounds as you may know if you've seen the previous video. So this was the second game I played uh, at the tournament but it was actually round 5. I had to miss the first 3 rounds because I had to take my driver's test. I don't know the English term for that. Okay, so I was playing an unrated opponent, which is unfortunate because even if you win, you don't get any rating points. But that's what happens when you miss the first three rounds of a Swiss tournament. Now, before round four, my opponent actually came to meet me. Uh, he, he watches the channel. So after our game, uh, we invited him and his friend uh, for barbecue at our place and we analyzed games and and spent the whole day together so he's a great guy uh underrated <clears throat> and i obviously had absolutely no idea what he was going to play he played e4 i played the karo khan and we get the exchange variation bishop d3 knight c6 c3 knight f6 h3 and h3 is uh, a sideline a sideline that aims to prevent bishop g4 Obviously, uh, the main line is bishop f4, bishop g4, and h3 prevents that. Okay, so black has no better option but to fianchetto the bishop and give the light squared bishop the f5 square by playing g6. Okay, and my opponent's next move surprised me. I've never seen it before, uh, and he said that he looked at the line with, with bishop g5 in one of my online games. I mean, maybe I faced it online. I, I don't remember and I don't know the move. Uh, the standard moves here are either knight f3, <clears throat> bishop f4 or queen c2. They are all good. I don't see the point of bishop g5 to be honest uh, because once I go bishop g7 uh, this bishop gave me access to, to the best diagonal on the board so I'm, I want to go queen c7 at some point and if the bishop was on f4 then I couldn't do that. So knight f3, I castled first, my opponent castled, and I played queen c7. I mean, why not? Uh, here he played queen c1, <clears throat> which seems like a strange move because it's... Well, the queen isn't on c2. Uh, the queen on c1 aims to exchange my dark squared bishop. I definitely don't want to trade pieces because if I reduce the material on the board, uh, I may not be able to win. So I decided to keep the pieces on the board at all costs. So I played rook e8 uh, and I, pre I was prepared to meet bishop h6 with bishop h8. Not that that's the best move and I knew that I was supposed to go e5. Uh, e5 is my main pawn break. So after my opponent played bishop h6, of course e5 is best and I should go e5, d5, knight e5, knight e5, queen e5. I have a lot of activity. I'm controlling the e1 square. And it's a good position. I can look forward to stuff like knight h5, f4, and, and so on. But again, this trades off too many pieces, and I, I didn't want to do that. So I decided to play it slow and play bishop h8. Why not? Okay, rook e1. Now again, I could go e5, uh, but at this point it trades even more material. So e5 takes, knight takes, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes... I know these positions, except the bishop should have uh, gone from f4 to h6. Uh, but yeah, again, I, I don't want to trade a pair of rooks and a pair of knights if, if I don't have to. Uh, the, this position is equal. So I needed to find a way to complicate things without trading pieces. At least that was the idea. Now, one tactical liability in my opponent's position is this queen on c1, so maybe... I will have knight b4 or, or knight d4 ideas and, and I did later on. So I played a6. Now a6 is a slow move. I don't want to go bishop f5 if I don't have to, especially with this, excuse me, with this bishop on h6. Uh, bishop f5 would be suicidal, takes takes and queen g5 would lead to mate. So I decided to fianchetto my bishop. Uh, my opponent prevented b5, which is good. He, he played a4 and I just played b6. Uh, I'm aware that this is suboptimal, but I wanted to, again, keep the pieces on the board. Knight bd2, 
bishop b7. Now to explain the tournament situation a bit more, uh, in a Swiss tournament you get paired with people who have an equal num number of points as you. And since I had 0 out of 3, and then I won round 4, I had to win a couple of games to, to get stronger opponents, so I couldn't risk tra trading pieces. Okay, queen c2 played here, and rook a c8. Now this sets up uh, either a trade to win the bishop pair, which I may or may not go for uh, with knight b4, or it sets up knight d4 if my opponent isn't careful. Okay, so he played rook e2, and I played knight h5. Uh, I wanted to set up uh, knight d4. So if my opponent does nothing, uh, let's say, I, I don't know, king h1, then knight d4. And after knight d4, bishop d4, I, I just went a pawn, and I should have a better position. But my opponent played rook a1, and I started calculating knight d4 again, and it doesn't work. Uh, it's funny, after the game I, I asked him, were you aware that I was threatening knight d4, and that you were preventing it throughout the game? He said no. So he kept preventing my threat without realizing it. Uh, in this position knight d4 doesn't work, because if, if I go knight d4 here, then knight takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, queen takes, bishop takes, rook takes, and after rook e7 I can resign, because mate is hanging on the back rank, and if I somehow find a way to prevent that, which would, I don't know, would be rook takes rook, rook takes rook, and then rook c8, then, then I lose the bishop. So it doesn't work. Uh, now I had the option to go knight f4 here, uh, grabbing the bishop pair, or knight b4. Uh, but again, I, I couldn't see a big advantage coming from that, so I played e6. Uh, I decided to set up the threat once again. Now if my opponent again does nothing, then knight d4 does work, because now there is no rook e7. In this same position I just win a clean pawn. <clears throat> but again, my opponent uh, prevented it without knowing it. Uh, he played knight f1, now the queen is defended, and knight d4 doesn't work. So I decided to grab the bishop pair, uh, not with knight b4, uh, I wanted to keep control over the e5 square uh, as much as possible, I played knight f4, and this forces a trade of bishops, and actually this is the bishop I would like to get rid of for my opponent, because the other one is still a tactical liability. So bishop takes is forced, pretty much, uh, queen takes, uh, and in this, this position my opponent made a mistake. Now, white should be slightly better here. Um, black has plans, and I have several ideas in this position. I could go for the bishop pair, I could I could start uh, with something like knight a5, knight c4, uh, trying to gain space on the queen side. I want to transfer this bishop to a more active square. I could blockade the king side with h with h5. I could prepare the e5 break, which is probably what I would have gone for. But here he played queen d2, and I was really happy to see queen d2, because once we trade queens, I have a better endgame. Uh, I took my opponent took with the knight from f1, and now this became extremely simple for me to play, and I have a clear plan. I need to prepare b5. And once I push b5, I'm going to be creating some weaknesses. So I played bishop f6 first. The idea is uh, I don't want to allow his knights into my queen side. And I would also, in some positions, like to play bishop g5 to prevent knight d2 after I break through on the queen side. And also, in some positions, my bishop may be useful on e7, supporting my pawn with b5, b4. So it's definitely a more active square. Knight f1, rook c7. I wanted to, well, get my other rook either to the c file or to the b file. Knight e3, rook e c8. And I'm slowly getting ready for something like knight a5 and knight b3 or knight c4 uh, blockading and then preparing b5. Obviously, I need to move the knight away so that I can play bishop c6, threaten the pawn. And if my opponent plays a5, then I've achieved something. If he plays bishop c2 to defend the pawn, then I have b5. And if he misplaces the rook, then my bishop is controlling the rook on a1, which is good. Knight g4 played, and here I could have gone for bishop e7, but I wanted to 
guard the dark square, so I played bishop, uh, bishop to g7. I can always play bishop f8 if I need to, and from g7 I can always also play bishop h6 after h5 to prevent knight d2. Uh, rook e5, and in this position I played a couple of what I think are very good moves. Uh, now black is better here, no doubt about that, without the queens on the board. White cannot go for white's main idea in the exchange, Karo Khan, which is a kingside attack, and they basically have a free hand on the queen side. So first I played a5, fixing this pawn, and it's not going to be easy to lift this blockade, uh, simply because the c3 pawn is hanging if the b2 pawn moves. And I'm not worried about the b5 square, because that blockade I can lift immediately with knight a7. Uh, also, if the knight is taken, then bishop takes is an immediate threat. My opponent played f4, uh, which I don't think is a good move, because it doesn't really do anything. Uh, it just gives away this diagonal, which could be important later. I played h5, I want to go bishop h6, if possible, sometimes. Uh, the knight went to h2, and now I just took on e5, f takes e5, and bishop c6, putting pressure on the pawn. Uh, he did play bishop c2, uh, now the bishop is slightly more passive, uh, and I played bishop e8, uh, just transferring my bishop to a, to a better square, sorry, sorry, bishop e8, uh, to a better square, and preparing uh, to get my rooks to the b-file, if possible, and go for b5. I could have gone b5 straight away, actually, which is, I think, my first uh, mistake in the game that I wasn't aware of. Uh, I, I did just didn't want to rush it. I decided that bishop e8 is safer first, but b5 is, is good. Uh, he has to take. I mean, if rook a1... Uh, uh, if rook a1, the pawns are too weak, I can probably just go b4. But let's say a b5, a b5, rook f2, and now something like bishop h6, pinning or pinning, preventing the e rook from moving. Uh, I don't know, let's say g4, a4, my pawns are moving, and I'm going to do this. I'm not really afraid of gh, gh. I, I don't think my opponent has an attack, and all I have to do is move my bishop, transfer my rooks, and start putting pressure on the pawn. It's going to be very hard to defend. Yeah, but I, I played bishop e8 first, which isn't bad. The knight came to f3, and I played bishop h6. Uh, I don't want to allow knight d2. If the knight comes to d2, I take it. That's the idea. Uh, the reason I want to prevent knight d2 is because the knight could, in some positions, get to the b5 square, which I don't want to allow. And it could also support c4 and b, b3, which I don't want to allow. So I was ready to take the, to take the knight. Uh, also, <clears throat> in the event of moves like rook f2, which my opponent played, uh, I have ideas like bishop f4, which I didn't play here. Maybe it was good enough. Uh, the engine says this is the best move. I, I saw bishop f4 with the threat of bishop g3, but I couldn't see the point after rook e2. Uh, the point is I can still play b5, but why wouldn't I keep preparing b5? What's my bishop doing on f4? But okay, let's say b5 here, rook a1, b4. Seems very, very pleasant for me. And if this is taken, my opponent loses the bishop. So I'm, I'm just going to win the c3 pawn. So after rook f2, I, I could have played bishop f4, but I played rook b8 uh, instead. And here my opponent played g3 after after this move. It's it's basically over because I play b5 and the, there are no moves for my opponent. You should also bear in mind that if the e1 rook ever moves, I win the exchange. So that's an important factor. And after b5... I'm just threatening to win a pawn, so my opponent took. I took with the bishop. I don't want to take with the rook because bishop a4 trades off pieces, and I need my pieces. I need my bishop to blockade on c4 to prevent the b pawn from moving. Uh, he played king g2 on pinning, or getting away from this. And after bishop c4, that's it. Uh, the pawn cannot be pushed forward. Uh, I don't know what to suggest. If, if rook a1 I take... Uh, my opponent played bishop a4, not that it matters, I played rook b7. Again, it was important to blockade with my bishop. 
And also bear in mind that not only do I win the B2 pawn, but the rooks are kind of uh, loose. And if this rook ever moves, I actually win the exchange because I have bishop e3, bishop d3. And my opponent lost the exchange straight away. He played rook a1 and I played bishop e3. This simply wins the exchange. After rook c2, I go bishop d3 and that's it. Uh, my opponent played rook b1. Uh, I took, he took with the bishop. I played rook b2, rook b2, rook b2. The bishop is pinned to the king and then defended. Knight e1 and bishop d2 was the final move of the game. You you cannot save both pieces. Uh, if you play something like king f1, then I take on, on e1 and then take on c2. <coughs> Maybe I could have also just pushed and queened, but this seemed simpler. So, yeah, I, I, I chose to play some risky ideas. I didn't go for activity I needed to go for because I didn't want to trade pieces, but it paid off in the end. And I, I think it was a good game. I mean, especially after queen d2, I think I converted the end game pretty precisely. So I was, I was happy with the game. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you got something from this game. Let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess. Bye bye.